Good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris, and I'm going to be uh, doing this video as a part of a project uh, for the first class, uh, for the class I'm taking in the summer. This is going to be for uh, biostatistics and epidemiology. Um, this is lesson one. This will include uh, lesson one, task one, and lesson one, task two. Uh, so task one asks me to describe the epidemic curve of a common source outbreak of an infectious disease that has a clinically asymptomatic period. Uh, that is to say it has an incubation period. Um, and this incubation period lasts two weeks. However, and this is important to note, uh, the disease is not transmissible from one person to another. Okay, so what I'm going to do to draw my epidemiological curve is I'm going to do the following. I am going to go ahead and draw an x and a y axis. So let's just go ahead and draw the y-axis and make it a little smaller. Okay, here's the y. And then I'm going to draw my x-axis here. All right. And I am going to call this task 1 up here. Now on the y-axis right here, I am going to have the number of cases of this disease. We can call it arbitrarily call it whatever uh, disease you want we can call it disease X okay so number of cases and we will have this number in arbitrary units um, only to say that in the positive Y direction the cases will increase uh, whereas the negative Y direction uh, will see a decrease in the number of uh, cases for this particular illness uh, likewise uh, along the X axis over here um, x-axis is going to plot time. I'll just write that there, time. And um, it'll be relative, relatively arbitrary in the units of time that we're using, only to say that in the positive uh, x direction, make that an x, the positive x direction, um, time will increase, whereas in the negative x, x direction, time will decrease. And I'm just going to arbitrarily say that um, here at, I'm going to make at time zero, Okay, so we'll just call that time zero, and at time zero is uh, where I had um, all of the people exposed to a common source. Okay, maybe uh, maybe it's a foodborne illness, and they all came together and ate at a picnic, and they were all exposed at, at approximately the same time, um, at time zero, uh, to uh, the source of the infection. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to arbitrarily mark off uh, a certain time. So right here, this first blue line, I'm going to make this one week. And then the second blue line, I'm going to make two weeks. Okay. So if you remember, this disease has an incubation period of two weeks. So what should we expect to see? Well, uh, so I have my exposure here. Um, there is no person-to-person -person contact in this case. So not a whole lot's going to happen. Um, the first week is going to go by uneventfully. And then approximately around the second week, what's going to happen is I'm going to start having cases of this disease occur. And the cases are going to start occurring uh, typically before the incubation period ends. Again, the incubation period is not an exact time. That is to say, at exactly two weeks after exposure, you're going to get the illness. Uh, but basically, it is a, it's, it's a mean. It's an arithmetic mean. It's an average. And it says you know, the average... You know, on the average, if somebody is going to, if somebody's exposed to this disease and they get the disease, um, on the average, it's going to take about two weeks uh, for them to develop that disease, and you have a little bit of, you know, you have a little bit of uh, quote unquote wiggle room, if you will. Um, you, you know, you have a couple standard deviations above and below that mean, you know, to where you you, know, you have all of your cases. Um, so what's going to happen is you're going to have these these outlying um, people that are going to get the disease prior to the onset of the of the two week or prior to the end of the two week incubation period but what's going to happen is very quickly you're going to have a very in a quick increase um, in the number of cases and it's going to probably be exponential if enough people are involved and eventually that's going to peak and that peak is going to happen somewhere around it's going to be centered somewhere around the two week period and then what's going to happen well, in this case, because there's no person-to-person -person contact, you know, all the people that are going to get the disease are going to get it, and they're either going to get better or they're going to get 
know, they're going to get dead, they're going to die, or you know, something, something on the lines of that. But oh, what's going to happen is it's going to level off, and then abruptly the number of cases will drop. Okay, um, as you know, people get better, or they they they, they perhaps you know, um, unfortunately um, die or succumb to the illness. You know, all the people that are going to get sick are going to get sick. And then, um, just like I had a little bit of uh, wiggle room prior uh, to the uh, end of the incubation period, I'm going to have a little wiggle room after the incubation period as well. And I'm going to have something that looks more or less like a normal distribution um, that is going to have its mean, um, you know, the mean peak in cases going to occur um, right around um, the incubation period. And then I'm going to have it exponentially decay and asymptotically the number of cases is going to approach and ultimately reach zero cases again and it's going to be self-limiting again because there's no person-to-person -person contact. Um, so that's what we see in this particular um, in this particular scenario. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about task two and in task two it says describe the epidemic curve of an outbreak of an infectious, infectious disease excuse me that began with a point source exposure to a few people. So I have a very similar initial, my initial conditions are going to be very similar to the first case. Um, uh, this too has an incubation period of two weeks. However, and this is very important, it can be transmitted from one person to another within five days of exposure. This is a game changer when it comes to um, describing this curve. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and uh, set up the same initial conditions and we'll use the same curve. Okay, I have my y axis and I have my x axis. So here's my y, here's my x. Um, I'm going to have my number of cases over here, time over here, and it is going to be the exact same setup as this guy here. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have my initial exposure, a point exposure occur. Few people are going to be exposed here. All right. Um, and then I am going to have, we will do one week here. We will do two weeks. So this is one week here. All right. I'm going to have two weeks here. And also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put five days here, all right, so five days, and then maybe uh, ten days, okay, and then I'm going to have uh, 15 days over here, and that's going to be important here in just a little bit. Okay, so um, I, I should also say that when I make these epidemiological curves, these epidemic curves, um, or outbreak curves, because epidemic and outbreak essentially means the same thing. We're talking about a, an abrupt um, increase in the number of cases that, that we would normally expect to see of a certain uh, condition. Um, I am assuming very, very specific boundary conditions. I'm assuming that there isn't going to be any interference from the outside, that we're not going to detect disease, that we don't have good measures to, to, to treat it, and so on and so forth. Um, and that it's just going to kind of run its course in, in sort of a vacuum where um, we're looking at this as more or less an isolated system. And, and, and we do know that, it, that in the quote-unquote real world, we may not necessarily see curves that exactly mirror this. Um, one, because you know, they're, they're, you, the uncertainties that we have um, in the population, the samples that we're using, and, and two, simply because there's um, a lot of... Um, a lot of different processes are, are going on and, and these aren't necessarily occurring in an isolated manner, but it's helpful to look at them in an isolated manner um, initially uh, to, to at least develop our initial models and then kind of kind of go from there to and, and, and kind of, um, you know, in some cases when we need to factor in um, perturbations to, to uh, you know, make these models match um, or explain you know, what, we, what we see in, in reality. But uh, going back to the question, uh, back to task two, uh, so we have our initial exposure to the point source here. And what's going to happen is I'm not going to have any cases. 
I'm not going to have any cases, and I'm going to hit five days. And at five days, I'm not going to have, um, I may have, you know, one or two cases, you know, if you have some, you know, really kind of some outlying uh, people um, that develop the disease real quickly for a variety of reasons. But more or less, we're not going to see any, any, any cases. However, those few people um, that have been exposed are now able to transmit that disease to other people. Okay, so at the five-day period, what happens is I have another exposure, if you will. I have more people being exposed. Okay, um, should make that ten days down there, huh? All right. Uh, then I have a week, seven days, and then ten days. I kind of have another exposure. Okay, and then right, you know, right around the two-week period, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is right here, it, just before the two-week period, just like I had up here, um, you know, I have some, some outliers. Um, these people here, these few people that were exposed, are going to start developing the disease, and you're going to see an increase in the number of diseases and the number of cases. And then those people um, are going to start you know, they're going to start getting better and you're going to see this decrease as, as, as they get better or perhaps, you know, succumb from the disease, depending on what we're talking about. But we need to remember that those people, so these people, let's see here, these people here, um, and maybe I'll just draw like a little circle, you know, a little symbol, are these people here. But I start these people here and out five days have started exposing these people here. Um, so an incubation period of two weeks after five days, right? So uh, let's see here, uh, 14 plus five is 19 days. So right here at about the 19 day mark, more or less, um, I'm going to draw maybe a little star. These people that have been exposed at five days are gonna start getting ill Okay, so the cases are going to kind of decrease, and then what's going to happen is these people here that were exposed at five days have now um, nearing the incubation period, and they're going to get sick, and it's going to go up again. Okay, um, so these guys here are these guys here, and then you know these guys now ten days after these guys get um, exposed, um, they're contagious, and maybe I'll draw a little. Uh, triangle here. Um, so what I'm going to have is, you know, two weeks after the 10 day mark. So maybe right over here, I am going to have these people here getting sick. And so this is going to go down and it's going to go back up and it's going to peak and down. And um, this is, uh, we'll say our triangle here. Okay. And I'm going to see something that kind of goes up and down and up and down and up and down and so on and so forth as this cycle, this kind of this vicious cycle uh, progresses. And um, the reason that we see this here is, and not here is that uh, primarily uh, when looking up in case one, um, this is person to person transmission can't occur. So all the people that get sick uh, get sick, it runs its course, and because they can't transmit to other people, it runs its course, and, and that's that. It's done. But here, you know, I have transmission that can occur at five days, um, and, and, you know, from, you know, five days, and then uh, incubation period after that, you know, 14 days, and so on and so forth. I kind of have this, this cyclic thing that occurs, a cycle um, that continues to occur, and um, goes on and on and on, and, you know, theoretically, if you have a, the, the proper boundary conditions and, you know, you isolate this uh, sufficiently, um, you know, you, you could see this occur several times um, before, uh, you know, you have some sort of intervention, some sort of perturbation, something occurs to kind of break that cycle. Um, so that is uh, task one and two. And again, this is a biostatistics and epidemiology um, lesson one assignment, task one and two. Uh, thanks for hanging in there, everybody.